Now I want you to know this. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. This is why you can't just exegete a particular verse and take it like it's an isolated little verse. You can't isolate this from the stuff that he just said prior to this. When he was talking about holy and beloved, compassionate hearts. Put on compassionate hearts. He says put it on. If you don't have it on, he says put it on. That means you have the capacity within you to change these attitudes or behaviors. He says, put on a compassionate heart. You know what it's like to be compassionate. You know what it's like to have compassion shown to you, so you ought to know how to show it to someone else. Kindness, humility. He says, put it on. If you're arrogant, put on humility. Put on meekness. Put on patience. If you're an impatient person, put it on. I know you weren't born with it, but you're naked, you're unclothed, but he says, put it on. And so you know how people... You, you, we call it when a person acts up, they cuss you out, and you call it showing their behind. He said, no, no, you need to cover that up. You need to put on humility. No, no, really. Bearing with one another. He said, listen, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgiving each other. See, all of this is a part of how you work things out. This is the process we all just want the miracle event of where, you know, everything is at peace and the peace of God rule in your heart. It's not going to just rule automatically. There's a process before it can rule. Because before you can rule something, it's going to be unruly. So you have to have some rules. You have to put on some things and give them the instruction. This is the instruction telling people who are walking in the nakedness of their flesh. You see their flesh. They show their flesh. So he's saying to us, put these things on, put on a compassionate heart, put on kindness, put on humility, put on meekness, put on patience. He says, put these different elements on. And he says, put up with each other. You're human beings, you all have faults, you have idiosyncrasies about yourself. You got to put up with each other. Do you know how many marriages that would be in divorce today if they didn't learn to put up with each other? I mean, the first lady has to put up with me. I have to put up with her, you know, but we're graced for it. She makes my job so easy. I'm so blessed. Oh. Because it's, it's difficult when you live with somebody who's right all the time. <laughs> I was wrong one time and after I thought about it, I was right after all. But let me just say that when your heart is at peace, you will create peace wherever you go. Maybe, just maybe, this is the whole idea of being a peacemaker. Because some people have confused being a peacemaker with being a peacekeeper. And these are two different things. See, a peacekeeper doesn't want to say something. They'll watch something that's wrong and not say something and because they're trying to keep the peace. But the peacemaker will see something that's wrong, speak up about it, do something to cause harmony so that justice and mercy are brought into the situation. So there's a huge difference between peacekeeping. Peacekeeping is passive. Peacemaking is active. It really is. So we have to understand that it's really about making peace because when you have peace in your heart, peace, but you have to make sure now, if you call yourself a peacemaker, you got to make sure that you're at peace yourself and not an, and, and not an, an agitator. Because uh, agitated people are agitated themselves. They're already irritated on the inside. They're already boiling. They don't have any peace. And so that's a different strategy, but it's not the biblical strategy to getting something solved here. When you're talking about being a peacemaker, the peacemaker has peace within and they become the thermostat, not a thermometer. They are a thermostat for every place where they go because they have this incredible ability to be able to bring calm into the room. It's amazing. I cannot tell you how I have walked into the hospital of individuals that have a person who's in intensive care right at the brink of death and the family is in pandemonium and when I walk into the room the atmosphere shifts because I didn't start to be who I am when I showed up 
I was praying all on my way there in the Holy Ghost. And, and uh, I'm going in to be able to transform the atmosphere when I'm walking into a place and somebody has died. I, there's an atmosphere that needs to be shifted. That there's a calm. I've, I've walked up to people when they're sitting in, in an automobile because they've had a, an accident and, and they're totally numb and out of it. And all of a sudden, when I stand there, that the presence of peace comes over them, this calmness that they don't even understand. But when you are a peacemaker, there's something that you have on the inside that you let on the outside that begins to influence the atmosphere. You are an atmosphere changer, whether you feel like it or not. There's a presence that is in you that when you go, you release it out of your heart. You see, remember that we have glory in us. We have glory in us. The glory is not ours to keep. The glory is ours to give. You can transform an atmosphere when you open up and let the glory that's on the inside come to the outside and transform the atmosphere. You see, because uh, when, when you uh, are, are so willing to, to open your mouth and glorify the Lord, then God will be magnified. But when you hold the, the, the glory, if you keep the glory, pride will settle in and you become king but when you give the glory you magnify the one who is king and so you have the capacity in you to transform the atmosphere there are some people that when they walk into the room everybody gets nervous because you know oh, oh, oh God the warden is home <laughs> you just feel like it's a prison the moment they walk in people you know scatter to their rooms it's amazing the atmosphere. Some of you all know who I'm talking about. <laughs> You're identifying. You know when certain people walk in. It's like something is cast over the place. But I just want you to realize greater is he that's in you. You have the capacity to be able to change the atmosphere. Let some of the peace that's in you, you know, s slip out into the room. And see, don't give people the luxury of being able to take away your peace. They didn't give it to you and they ought not have the power to take it away. God's people know an inner peace and that enables us to be compassionate and kind and patient and forgiving. All of these things that were talked about in Colossians chapter 3 that ultimately bring us to the place where the peace of Christ rules in the heart. He rules in our heart. He rules in our heart by these things, compassion, kindness, patience, meekness, humility, forgiveness. I love what Doris Mortman said. She said, until you make peace with who you are, you'll never be content with what you have. And I feel sorry for people who have to live with people who are discontented with who they are because they don't ever find satisfaction with other people around them because ultimately they are dissatisfied with who they are. Irritated people irritate other people. But when you are satisfied with yourself, you become a blessing to those that are around you. So until you make peace with who you are, you'll never be content with what you have.